The Mount Balfour district was always known as just another tin scratches field, a poor man's field. That was until 1901 when a prospector by the name of Fred Smith unearthed a rich vein of copper ore. This discovery resulted in the formation of a four-man syndicate led by two brothers with a higher understanding of mining operations, William and Tom Murray. The men then acquired what is known as a reward claim, granting them 21 years of lease rent free for an area of 80 acres. Serious mining would not begin on the field, however, until 1907, as its poor reputation made it hard to find the investors that were needed. Along with this, the area was so remote that the only way to access it was by arriving on the coast via sea journey or the arduous 20 mile backtrack from Roger River West. Despite this, by 1908, Murray's reward was carting out three tonnes per week of high grade copper ore to the boat harbour of Wales Head, or Temma, as we now know it. Before long, a settlement was established overlooking the workings on the rich volcanic soil hill. It contained 12 streets, two hotels, a general store, cemetery, school, hospital, and multiple dwellings. None, however, more grand than the Murray's, which TB Moore fondly referred to as Murray's Mansion. Later, the old back track was upgraded for pack horse use and suspension bridges built over the Arthur and Frankland rivers. The road to Waleshead was upgraded in 1911 to a wooden tramway cart drawn by horse. This was the way that 15-year-old Sylvia MacArthur arrived to Balfour with her family. Sylvia's father, William, had just been appointed the new Murray's Reward Mine foreman, and the family wasted no time settling into the now thriving community. Sylvia quickly became a beloved correspondent for Balfour and had many letters published in the Young Folks section of the Courier, detailing of the town's many happenings. But between the fine print trouble loomed, health officials had warned in the past of Balfour's lack of sanitary disposal and a typhoid outbreak had wreaked havoc over the town. Around the same time all this was happening, news had been relayed to the Murrays that majority of the rich copper load had been worked out and further funding would be needed to search deeper. Copper had already dropped 30% over the last five years and the mine was months behind on paying its staff wages. It might be assumed that all this pressure was enough for what followed, as on Friday the 8th of November 1912, it was announced that William Murray had taken his own life, having shot himself in the head. Underneath this report was the tragic news that Sylvia had also passed, having both effects cast a gloom over the township. It is possible to visit the site of Balfour by car, but bushfires have now destroyed all of the original buildings. A small section of the pack track has been preserved and runs along Stevens Rivulet, about 10 kilometers north of the town. Having virgin forest in between this and the town, I was interested to see what I could find by retracing the route while making my own journey to visit Balfour. Once I'm done, I'll spend the day packrafting the Franklin River back to near where I parked my car. Now you're probably wondering, how the hell are you going to follow this pack track that has been out of use for, for at least 60 or 70 years? And the thing is, I don't really intend to follow the pack track the whole way. What I've done is I've got a rough outline of where the pack track went. Um, this pack track was created for the use of horse. So the horse pack tracks always avoided swampy areas. They stuck to the higher ground and they followed ridges. And based on the contours and everything of this area, I've got a rough idea um, which hills the pack track followed and for how long before they diverted and changed over to another hill um, across a lower area and whatnot. So, based on those very vague clues, um, I'm going to be trying to follow the route. And if I come across any evidence or any signs that there was the pack track there, then that'll be great. But I'm not expecting to. You just can't expect that type of stuff to be still sitting out here. And not only that, but because it hasn't been walked, it hasn't been maintained, there's fallen logs everywhere, there's regrowth everywhere. Even if I was five meters from the track, I might know it because it's just gonna be that 
hidden. Um, but the good thing is, this is a myrtle forest. It should be quite clear underneath. Um, I am expecting a lot of scrub as well, but for the most part, this is predominantly a myrtle forest and that's what I'm gonna be following. Um, yeah, whether I get there today or tomorrow, I'm not too sure. We're just gonna to have to take it step by step and see where I end up. Looking forward to it though. It's gonna be one hell of an adventure. So one thing I've got on my side is the known pack track that has been maintained finishes here in the southern part. So I'm gonna cross the road, try to find the next part of it if possible, and then just head south for 10 or 12 Ks or whatever it is until I get to the Frankland River. Okie doke, let's get stuck into this one. made it to the top of this hill it's called uh merv's hill from merv the myrtle one of my mates hey merv how are you dude Day's getting on now, it's about four o'clock and I've got about a kilometer to go until I get to the creek that I'm gonna set up camp. This is kinda the last of the ridge and then dropping into heaps of greenery. Hopefully it's not too much horizontal but I've got a feeling that there will be heaps of horizontal. Anyway, I'll just give you guys an update when I get set up at camp.
pretty excited about tonight's sleep. Not because I'm super sore, but the guys from Neve Gear were nice enough to send me a sleeping bag, minus 10 one, and uh, even got to choose my own custom colors, so it's gonna be epic to try this out. Proper. Should get down to about three or four degrees tonight. I went for the all black with a green strip. It's so light, this stuff. Oh, this is living. This is living. Time to get back in the bush again <clears throat> for the final stretch. About three kilometers, maybe four. Depends what kind of crap vegetation we run into in the line that I've picked out. But either way, we'll be arriving at Bow 4 by lunchtime. See here this cutout on the side of the bank and the pack track that I've just followed all the way down the ridge. But I'm really surprised that none of this was showing up on leader imagery because this is obviously where the Franklin bridge was. You can see the wire cables here, they span across the length of the river to the other side. Gives me such a weird kind of nostalgic feeling standing here because I've seen the photographs of the big arch in the bridge and the cables that ran across it and just to see it here in person as nothing, you know? Like so much time has passed in the blink of an eye and there's just nothing left of it. I'll see if I can pull the um, photo up of what it used to look like.
Yeah. That's it right there. A really massive grand bridge ready to turn this little mining town into something massive and it just never happened. All right, let's get over there. sets of wires, of course. That log is massive. Just paddling underneath it right now. Made it over the other side. It was hard to find a place where I could actually pull in that was low enough um, to offload my bag and stuff, but anyway, I managed it, so I'm gonna climb up out of here. I think I can see one of the graves. Wow. William Wallace, Fullerton Murray. Sylvia Iris MacArthur. Wow. What a setting. There's another one here. Dr. Waddleton. Wilkinson. Third of Jan, nineteen ten. Some writing on that vase. Such an amazing sight. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's pretty eerie, but beautiful at the same time. And it's just, yeah, it's creepy. All right, go check out some of the old roads and stuff around the old town site. I'm just walking up to the town site and this was an original roader, I'm pretty sure. No bottle. This big old blackwood here where um you must park your car to walk down to the Franklin River and Cemetery. Reminds me of those ones I was walking through yesterday. That was amazing. Just whole forests of blackwood. Oh, it's starting to rain. I think there's like a little shacky um, barbecue area up here. 
So I'm going to pull in there and have some lunch. I'm starving. Never seen this many currawongs before that hang out around this place. They're obviously so used to humans feeding them. <laughs> and the wallaby down there. Cute little guy. So I've just been sitting here reading these books. Um, they're not really books, they're like little folders with info and stuff. But I came across this gem of a book and it's got some maps in it and heaps of information about plenty of things to see around the town. It says, the sheds where you got this information on Alexander Street were erected in the 1950s by BHP and used as a camp for exploration and drilling crew. So it says here, Murray's Reward Copper Mine is only five minutes walk from the centre of town. If you walk or drive back down the cobbled road that leads into Balfour, as you reach the bottom of the hill you will see an adit into the side of the ridge directly opposite the road you have just come down. It says, duh, 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 don't go into it. To the left of the adit is a path that takes you to the top of the ridge and is the main shaft into the mine. This shaft is dangerous and should not be approached. The remains of the old steam-powered winder still rest near the shaft. Let's go. So I think This here is the entrance to the reward mine. Ah, uh, yep. So that's the shaft. Gated off. To the left of the adit is a path it takes you to the top of the ridge and the main shaft into the mine. This shaft is dangerous and should not be approached. The remains of the old steam powered winder still rest near the shaft, which is this here. I might uh, put the drone up and fly it over the shaft rather than go anywhere near it. Next up it says, a short walk to the north of the shafts will bring you back to the main road into Balfour. Walk west for a few minutes and soon after the road levels off, take a turn to the right. This will lead you through some more yellow mullet keeps, past an adit into the ridge and onto the central mine which is completely flooded. Timbers in this shaft are well preserved by the copper rich water which floods the mine and can be clearly seen through the water on a sunny day. I don't know what that stuff is. But it doesn't look healthy.
apparently there's a well in here somewhere but I can also see some sort of building structure this must be it here dug straight down until they hit water. Impressive. All these old buildings are so intriguing. I wonder if anyone's in them. Creepy. Wow. This place. Toilet. Kitchen, massive lounge, fireplace. What more do you want? and stay as dry as possible today.
back on dry land. Found the road and uh, I've got to follow this thing for about an hour to get back to the car, which is pretty good considering I woke up this morning in Balfour. Um, must have done about 16 k's or 17 k's I think on the Frankland River, which is pretty specky. But she's all over now. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you don't click off it before engaging. Likes and comments are going to help increase uh, how much this video gets suggested and help the channel grow. Thanks guys, take care.